and the kill. The U-boat will decide the outcome of the war. This is what Hitler is telling the Germans, as his underwater sailors harvest victory after victory in the Battle of the Atlantic. The realities support him in mid-1943. The massacre by German submarines is costing the American republics and the British Empire millions of dollars. Thousands of Allied sailors are dead. And for this, Hitler honors his naval high command. <laughs> to the Third Reich. Glory to the victims. Hitler presses his propaganda machine to the ultimate, squeezing each drop of triumph out of each victory. Every German is told his submarines threaten the entire Allied war effort with collapse. Germany rejoices in the news that if the United States and Great Britain continue losing at sea, they will be defeated everywhere. Pride has been his army, is now convinced that submarines deserve top priority in his war economy. Newer and deadlier U-boats are put into mass production. Factories throughout Germany and occupied Europe fabricate parts that are rushed to shipyards for final assembly. the Nazis turn out newer and more murderous models, the doom of the submarine is being sealed by the Allies. To counteract enemy submarines, a ring of strategic air bases has been forged. One by one, key areas are developed from which planes can cover most of the Atlantic with an umbrella of aircraft. Step by step, the sea becomes as deadly for the Germans as they have made it for the Allies. Arc by arc, in 600-mile sweeps, planes encompass the North Atlantic. Sector by sector, aircraft, one of the most potent of anti-submarine weapons, spreads its protection over ocean routes and coastal lanes. Base by base, planes reach out, curtailing the range and speed of the U-boats by keeping them submerged. Area by area, protection grows as the mere presence of aircraft overhead discourages attacks on convoys, breaking the morale of U-boat crews.
but there is still a center ocean gap, the black pit left uncovered by land-based planes. U-boat paradise. Allied bombs are not only over the Atlantic, but from English bases they're being flown over Germany where they are dumped by the millions, despite Goering's promise to the contrary. Bombs on factories where U-boat parts are made. Bombs on railways that bring the parts together. Bombs on pens where the submarines hide. U-boats are being destroyed before they can stalk the sea. challenge of the mid-ocean black pit, where U-boats still roam unmolested. Critical materials and supplies are diverted to the construction of a new class of ship in the United States Navy, officially designated the CBE. Their crews will call them Jeep carriers or baby flat cars. But Jeep carriers alone are not enough. The Navy begins training pilot candidates with special aptitudes and building the planes for those who pass the rigid test. All three elements of the plan, building the ships, training the men, turning out the planes, progress simultaneously in an all-out effort aimed at killing enemy submarines.
wavy flat top. Small but tough. A new dimension in convoy protection has been added. sail across the fatal mid-ocean gap, soon to be U-boat hell. No enemy submarine can surface anywhere in the Atlantic, from the Arctic to the Antarctic, without fear of destruction. The Allies force the sea lanes open for the liberation of Europe, for ultimate victory. down on a hundred ocean fronts. Another campaign is being waged against them ashore. The 10th Fleet, which has no ships and will never put to sea, is the directing mind of anti-submarine warfare. Its function is to coordinate all intelligence, ships, and devices used against enemy submarines, and devise the best possible protection for Allied shipping. It replaces haphazard methods with a unified assault against the U-boats. Ships designed to kill U-boats. The destroyer escorts are the final, basic component needed to annihilate the Germans operating under the Atlantic. The ships and the gallant sailors who manned them. in research centers, where extraordinary instruments are invented and perfected to aid in detection, pursuit, and the fight. Instruments that link ship to ship, ship to plane, plane to plane, in unified hunter-killer groups. Guadalcanal has one of the most exciting tales to tell of the Allied victory in the Battle of the Atlantic. On June the 4th, 1944, two days before the Normandy invasion, the Guadalcanal, with escorts, is cruising off the Azores in search of prowling submarines. She already has four kills to her credit and is looking for more. 
but this time with an added flourish. She has her heart set not on sinking another submarine, but on capturing one. All hands in the task group are looking for trouble. Submarine contact. Out goes the word. We are starting attack. Inside the unsuspecting submarine, everything is relaxed and routine. It is Sunday and the Germans are taking it easy. But there is a surprise in store for them. below, their target is changing course. One of the planes swoops down to mark the U-boat's location with machine gun fire. goes the sub. Cut the engines. Silence. But there is no escape. A fatal wound. The sub must die below or fight it out on the surface. Coming up. Small caliber guns take the submarine under fire to keep her crew from using their deck gun and force them to abandon their boat. Ancient 
water rings out. Away all boarding parties. Not since the War of 1812 has a ship of the United States Navy captured an enemy man of war on the high seas. German sailors are taken prisoner, including the captain of U-505. Only one has been killed. The Guadalcanal brings her prize, defeated and helpless alongside for towing back to Bermuda. And with the U-505 vanishes the German dream for conquest of the Atlantic. Before Germany's unconditional surrender, 866 Axis submarines lie dead on the ocean floor. Victory in the Battle of the Atlantic is the result of teamwork between the Allies and integration of all weapons. The Germans surrender. The Battle of the Atlantic is won. The desperate, vicious struggle is over. To Allied airmen and sailors who have restored freedom to the seas, all honor for making victory possible in World War II.